All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. This is Brother Azariah from W of Fire, Jersey, Philly, coming back with another video, giving all honor and glory to the Most High Yahweh, which the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai, which the world calls Jesus Christ. Shalom, Shalom. Lord willing, you brothers and sisters are waxing mightier and mightier in your faith. And if it be in the will of the Lord, you're also increasing in your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in these last days. All right, so with that being said, and the topic of this video is be careful of what you reveal and who you reveal it to. All right. This is very important because this is this comes with having discernment. All right. When you're able to discern, all right, you'll know, look, hey, I could do this here. Or hey, look, I can't do this here. Some people would know discernment. All right. For example, hey, they yell, they yell inside the house and they yell outside the house. All right. If you have ears to hear what I'm saying, and when you was a child and you went to elementary school and when you were talking loud and the teacher said, look, use your inside voice. You're inside. When you're outside playing in the park and you're outside with your friends, look, you can yell and talk as loud as you want. All right. That's discernment, knowing when and where to do things and knowing how to do it as well. All right. That's important and it's true. Let me get a precept. All right. One second. So this is the book of Sirach 22 and verse 16. It says, as timber girt and bound together in a building cannot be loose with shaking, so the heart that is established by advised counsel shall fear at no time. And where do you get advised counsel from? Yes, you can go out there and receive counsel from men. All right. That's one way of receiving counsel. But the best way to receive counsel is reading the scriptures in and out. All right. Didn't Paul say this in Romans 15? All right. Let's grab this quick precept. It's the book of Romans 15, and it may be verse uh, 2 or 3. All right. This is Romans 15 and verse number 3. It says, it's like in verse 4. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So the Bible is not... You don't just read the Bible and and you're reading it like a story, all right? You're supposed to learn from these things. When you read Kings, all right, when you're reading Chronicles, all right, when you're reading Samuel, when you're reading Proverbs, when you're reading uh, Daniel, when you're reading Revelation, whatever it is that you're reading, the epistles, all right, the gospel. When you read the gospel, you're not just reading it just because, oh, it's my time to read. All right, on my clock, I got a time. I got a reading time. Look, my, my reading uh, uh, clock went off. My reading alarm went off. Look, I'm going to just go read. And I'm just kind of reading. I'm just getting through it. You know, I, I said I was going to read five chapters. So I read my five chapters and that was, that was that. I didn't learn nothing from it. All right, when you're reading these things, these things are written for your learning. That's why when you read the scriptures over and over again, you find yourself finding something new that you never realized before or you see how you you watch how a certain scenario played out all right you see how it applies to another precept or how it may apply to the law all right or you may read something and see how a certain so-called story unfolds all right a, a story you may see how it unfolds and you say look hey i took this from it i took that from it look this this situation it taught me to do this this situation look it taught me to do that all right. That's what you should be doing when you're reading the scriptures, not playing around, not just doing it because it's fun or, you know, I'm just reading. No, the Lord said for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. It says that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. See that? So hey, your best counsel is going to come from the scriptures. All right. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If you don't know, and you may be new to the truth, so you, you really may not know. Everything that you see in the world is explained to you in the Bible, whether it be in the Apocrypha, all right, or whether it be in the King James Version Bible, all right? Everything you need to know is found right here in these books, all right? And if you have a 1611, you, have, you would have the Apocrypha and you would have the Old Testament and the New Testament all combined into one book and all the knowledge is there for you, all right? Same difference. 
But my point is, anything you see happen in the world, any scenario that happens in the world, whether whether it's um, it's a hood story, all right, where where Jake he might he might have uh, uh, some woman that he has, and he uses this woman to you know he call her on the phone and he uses her to line people up. Even that, that's explained to you in the scriptures. All right, when when people when people lie and 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 scam and and do all these things to other people, all these things are found in the scriptures. All right, the Most High, look, He gives you the upper hand. Hey, this is your upper hand right here. When you go out there in the world and you are going through, you know, all these different things and you see different stuff, look, this is your advantage. All right. Look, when you read the scriptures and you go out there in the real world, look, you're not surprised. Anything you see, it doesn't surprise you. All right. So like the Lord said, I'm going to read this one more time. This is Sirach 22 and verse 16. It says, as timber girt and bound together in a building cannot be loose with shaking, so the heart that is established by advanced counsel. See, your heart has to be established by this. That's why I said, hey, well, you should notice you got to read the scriptures over and over again. And when you're learning something, you're taking something from the scriptures, you got to make sure you got to do your due diligence and, and kind of see what's being taught to you. What is the most high trying to portray for you? What lessons is the Lord showing you when you read this book or when you read this chapter? Or, or what is the Lord showing you from this situation that may have happened in the scriptures? All right, you have to be, like it says, established by advanced counsel. In the scriptures, this is of the Lord, all right? From the beginning to the end, this is all written of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, who, you, who the world calls Jesus Christ, all right? This is your advanced counsel. And you have to be established in this. You have to trust these scriptures. You can't read the scriptures and it says, Thou shalt not do this, or you shouldn't do that. And you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. Then you go and do the opposite of what the Lord is teaching you. You're going to get jammed up. Are right, you going to quickly learn and realize why you should have followed the scriptures? All right, and why you should have been established by advanced counsel? And he says, I'm going to read it one more time. It's the book of Sirach 22 and verse 16. As timber girt and bound together in a building cannot be loose with shaking, so the heart that is established by advanced counsel shall fear at no time. All right, because when you read these scriptures, all right, over and over again, and you're continuously learning, as I keep saying, and you're learning new things, all right, and, and then you apply the things you're learning to your life and what you're doing and, and, and actually bring forth fruits with what you've been learning, you, you won't fear at no time. Or you have nothing to fear. Or for example, if you have a man traveling on the road, all right, it may be his first time, you know, making this trip. All right, he may be traveling from, from New Jersey to Texas. All right, now on the, on the way, look, he's going to go through a, a plethora of things. His tire might get flat. All right, he might get a flat tire. He might run out of gas while he's driving and there's no gas station for miles away. All right, he might run into... Uh, uh, scammers on the way. He might kind of go into a shop and it's a shop of scammers. They kind of try to scam him. All right, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. All right, you know, you might get in an accident on the way there and you don't really got the funds to get a rental. Then you're kind of stuck in a hotel for a few days till you can get back on your feet and then you can make that trip to Texas. All right, look, you done went through all that stuff. Now, when this man takes this trip a second time, look, he's kind of prepared for it. He, he's not as fearful as he may have been the first time because, look, he's been there, done that. So once something comes his way, look, he's not pouting and saying, woe is me. What am I going to do? I've never been here before. No, he's going to take his past experience and he's going to use it and, and, and put forth action. All right, do what he got to do. He's not going to be fearful of the challenges to come. Because like I said previously, look, he's been there, done that already. That's just like a man that has discernment and he uses the discernment that he, that's been given to him in the scriptures. 
See, when certain things come your way, you're not going to fear it. You're not fearful of obstacles anymore because what? Look, your discernment and you your discernment that you have that the Most High has given you, look, you're dependent on that and you trust in that. So anything that comes your way, you understand, look, there's an answer to it in the scriptures and, and you apply what the scriptures have been teaching you to your scenario that's taking place. All right. So that's why he said a man, look, when he's uh, established in adv advance, it's like an advised counsel, he shall fear at no time. Why? Because he has discernment. Why you didn't think Yahweh Shai was fearful? Yahweh Shai really wasn't fearful. Why? Because his discernment was up there. All right. I mean, it's the Lord. The Lord knows exactly what's going on. He can discern evil from good. So there was no, there was nothing to fear. That's how we got to walk in these last days. We got to walk like the Lord. We got to have discernment like Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai, he showed his discernment all the time. All right. Let me get this one uh, precept. I always pull this. Right, it's one of my favorite precepts. It's the book of Luke 9 and verse uh, 55. All right. I'm going to start at verse 50. I'm going to start at 51. All right. And it reads, it says, and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. This is the Lord who the world calls Jesus. All right. It says, and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. So the Samaritans, hey, look, they wasn't dealing with the Lord. All right, put it like that. They didn't receive him. Verse 54. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we co command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did, which is Elijah? So when you go to 2 Kings, or the first chapter, turn on down, and Elijah, he caught fire down. Elijah, he caught fire down from heaven and he destroyed men. All right? Because they, you know, they kind of wasn't, they didn't have the same agendas. All right? You know, Elijah, he, you know, he had something else in mind. And then these men that pursued Elijah, look, they had another thing in mind. All right? But that didn't line up with the, what the Lord had set up. So look, the Lord had Elijah call fire down from heaven and scorch these men up and burn them up. See now, you know, they're saying, look, and it says James and John, they saw this. They saw how these Samaritans, they wasn't really rocking with the Lord. All right. When you when how should I walk through? All right. The, uh, uh, Samaria, they probably was looking at him like, and whispering. Are right, you know, Jake, when you walking down the street, all right. Or even the new kid, you know, you when you're the new kid in school, or right, Jake, they kind of looking, they sit next to each other, and they looking at you like this, and they whisper and talking and, and doing this. He's nobody, and and whatever the case may be, that's what Jake does. All right. So when Yahweh was walking through the city, look, they was kind of they was kind of blowing them off, and James and saw James and John, they saw this, and they were displeased by this, and they said, "Look, hey Lord, remember what Elijah did." Remember, he called down fire from heaven. I right, burnt men up. He burnt men up. Hey, look, let's do the same thing. Shouldn't we do that? What did the Lord say? Verse 55. But he turned. This is Yahweh Shai. This is the Lord. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Now, James and John, they, they knew this. They knew Yahweh Shai came to save men's lives. But you see, look, they were being carnal men. But, you know, if they used their discernment a little better, they would have knew, they would have known before even asking this question, they would have known that was a dumb question to ask. Because when we read the, script, uh, the scriptures and the gospels, when has Yahweh Shai one threatened anybody really? Or, or said, look, I'm about to call fire down from heaven and destroy men. No. When Yahweh Shai was walking on the scene, look, he he had a name that he came with, all right? And that name was pretty much uh, salvation, all right? He was coming with salvation. That's the name Yahweh Shai was walking in, the name of salvation. He was bringing forth salvation to Yahshua Allah, which would be the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all right? And Yahshua Allah, that means Israel, all right? So again, hey, look. You've never seen Yahweh, and these men walk with the Lord, all right? 
they never seen the Lord cast down fire on people. He could have. He had multiple opportunities, but he never done so. But this to show you, hey, look, the discernment of the Lord. All right, he, he's like, yo, what are y'all talking about? You don't know what spirit. Look, you got a spirit on you. Just like we say that now, that's what the Lord was saying. He said, look, you got a spirit on you. That's off. That's not why we're here. But you see, if again, as I said, if they use a little more of the discernment, they would have known that from the rip. That's why discernment is very key. See, if you don't have discernment, you can make mistakes. Look, imagine, imagine, imagine they were able to just call down fire from heaven right then and there. And imagine the Lord wasn't there. Imagine James and John was walking down or walking in Samaria. And they was like, look, you got to repent. You got to believe in the Lord. All right. It's time to repent. We in the last days. Believe in Christ. Believe in Hamashiach. And then they kind of treated them the same way. Like, man, get out of here. Just blowing them off. We don't believe in the Lord. We don't want to believe in that. See, if they didn't have Yahweh Shai there, and they might have called fire down from heaven, they might have took things into their own hands. They might have called fire down from heaven and burnt those men up, and then they would have got judged. See, because they thought that was the right thing to do. But ultimately, that would have been the wrong thing to do, as we just read. So this, this alone shows you a discernment is very key. But now, nonetheless, hey, let's get into the topic. All right? So in this truth, you got to be aware of what you reveal to people. All right? And you got to be careful of who you're revealing. Slocky. And you got to be careful of who you're revealing these things to. All right? If you didn't know by now, I'm going to tell you again. All right, everybody in this truth cannot be trusted. You don't just trust every brother in the truth because he got fringes on, all right, because he has a head wrap on, all right, be, be, because he, he has a KJV Bible, all right, just because he got a, just because a brother got a Bible in his hand, hey, look, that don't mean you could trust him, all right, I'm going to put it like that. Let's get uh, Jeremiah 9 and verse 4. This is the book of Jeremiah 9 and verse 4. It says, take ye heed every one of his neighbor. The Lord said, take ye heed every one of his neighbor. Why did the Lord say that if you could just trust everybody? The Lord said, look, you got to take heed. There's men amongst you that can't be trusted. All right. Now read it on. It says, and trust ye not in any brother. So you don't just trust any man. All right. For every brother will utterly supplant and every neighbor will walk with slanders and they will deceive every one his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit inequity. And the Lord, he was talking about, he was talking about Israel. As I keep saying, which are the blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. He's talking about us. He said, look, hey, don't trust these guys. Hey, some of them, they'll supplant you. Some of them walk with slanders. You got Jake. Jake likes to slander. All right. That's the thing. And it's true. I noticed that. All right. A lot of Jake like to do that. I like to talk about other people. All right. So it says, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. They will deceive his neighbor. It says, and will not speak the truth. And you got men in this thing. They'll lie to you. They'll tell you what you want to hear. I remember there was this sister that was there was a sister I was speaking with um a while ago. And um I explained to her, like, look, a hey, sex is marriage. All right, being that you know you had sex with A, B, and C, hey, look, you're married. That's that. Now another another group said, look, sex is not marriage. Don't worry about that, sister. You're not married to her no more. You're not married to him no more. Hey, look, you kind of come and do what you want. All right. You you know, you welcome here. All right. You welcome here. You can come here and you can do whatever the hell you want. You want to lay down with that brother? What, you want this one? How about this one? Look, we got another one here for you. Hey, you know, we can arrange the marriage. We can, we can do whatever. All right. And, you know, she kind of went with that. She took that. And then, and that's what she believed. All right. I don't know what she believes now, but at the time, look, that's what she believed. That happens in the truth. Men will lie to you. I mean, it says it's playing upon tables in the scripture, sex is marriage. All right. When you read Tobit, 
All right, what did they call what did they call the room uh 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 that I believe I believe her name was Anna. All right, uh, uh Tobias wife. All right, what what the hell did they call that room that they laid down in? They called it the marriage chamber and it clearly had sex. All right, so so they laid down in the marriage chamber and you know I mean, it's playing upon tables. They had sex in that room, and that room that they had sex in was called the marriage chamber. That's plain. But you, but look, you got men, they'll lie. They'll say certain things just to get what they want. You see that in the world. Jake will, Jake will tell you whatever they want. All right, whatever they want to tell you just to get you to do something. Look, that's ha that happens in the truth. It says that they have taught their tongue to speak lies. And weary themselves to commit inequity. You got men, they just they just keep sinning. They just can't stop. All right, they just can't stop lying. All right, they, you know, they can't stop surplanting. All right, they can't walk with a, a, a single tongue. They got a double tongue. These things happen in the truth. And you got to be cautious of that. All right, you got to be very careful. Let me get this one more time. This is the book of... Um, Sirach, Salakia, 8, and I believe, I'm going to start at verse 19. Actually, I'm going to start at 18. The Lord says, he says, do no secret thing before a stranger. For thou knowest not what he will bring forth. See, you can't just, I, I see this a lot too. All right, somebody uh, uh, will just meet a camp or just meet certain brothers or just meet certain sisters all right, you know, sisters and brothers, they'll they'll be meet, they'll meet one another for the first time. All right, and they start kind of revealing things that that should be a secret. All right, saying this, telling their story about this, revealing their life story about that. I mean, brother and sister, look, y'all just met, so you don't just meet somebody. You kind of just just kind of let loose, say, look, I'm gonna tell this man, I'm gonna tell this woman everything. All right, you, I mean, brother, you don't know this person. And if your sister, look, you don't know her. You don't know their sister like that. Whoever it may be that you're speaking to, look, you don't really know them like that. Certain things you gotta kinda you gotta kinda hold it down. Cause you might tell this person the secret of yours, all right, or or something that you you should kept keep a secret. You might tell them, and then they're looking at you like, oh, okay. And then and then now they're gonna tell somebody else. Then that somebody else tells somebody else. Or, hey, what you just told them, look, they may use it against you. Hey, that happens in the truth, too. People will use things against you. Let me give an example of that. All right. It's the book of uh, Judges. All right. Judges 16. And I'm going to start at verse 18. All right. And this is this video is especially for new brothers and sisters that's coming into this truth. All right. This is the book of Judges 16, and I'm going to start at verse 18. All right, and it reads, it says, and we all know the story more or less of Delilah and Samson. This is what we're going into here. All right, so this is not, uh, uh, Judges 16 and 18. It says, and when Delilah saw that he had told her, I'll start at verse I'll start up a little more. I'll start at verse 13. I'll start at verse 12. So like you. So this is number uh, Judges 16 and verse 12. It says, Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith. The hem is Samson and said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber. And he break them from off his arms like a thread. And now what's going on here is Samson obviously told Delilah, look, you tied me up with these ropes. Look, I'll lose all my strength. That turned out to be a lie. All right. He was lying to her. Verse 13. And Delilah said unto him, unto Samson, hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her. If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web, and she fastened it with the pin, and said unto him, 
the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pen of the beam and, the, and with the web. And she said unto him, how canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, there hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto Yahweh from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. See, look, hey, Samson, he kind of gave it up. All right, he said, look, you cut these locks off. Hey, my strength, it'll be gone. Hey, the most high, he's going to depart from me because the Lord, the Lord made uh, Samson to be a Nazarite. He's not supposed to shave his head. All right, he wasn't supposed to do that. And in return, the Lord gave him strength. All right, but look, and he kind of, he, he spilt the beans. Now let's see what happens. All right, verse 18, it says, and when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines saying, come up this once for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. See, look, hey, she kind of had Samson playing with his hair. And he, you know, you know, he kind of fell asleep. All right, let's see what happens. It says, and she made him fall asleep upon her knees. And she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at the other time before and shake myself. And he was not that the Lord was departed from him, but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. That's a plain example. See, look, Samson. And he gave up certain information that he really should never gave up. All right, he didn't really know Delilah that long. And he just said, look, hey. And at first, you know, he, he held strong. And then he finally gave up. All right. That goes with Sirach 19, and I mean, 18 and verse 18. The Lord says, do no secret thing before a stranger, for thou knowest not what he will bring forth. And that's not just saying, oh, you know, if. If you secretly do this behind the scenes, look, don't show that to somebody. That is saying that. And not only that, on another fold, it's also telling you, look, you just don't reveal certain secrets to people. You don't reveal your secrets to strangers. All right? You don't really know this person. And you're kind of showing them things that you would only show to your spouse. All right? You, you, you letting this person know things only your spouse may know. Or, or things that only the most high and you should know. That should be kept between yourselves. Look, you don't know what's going to happen after that. And look what Delilah did. All right, she found out his strength. And she didn't say, you know what? I'm not going to tell the Philistines. No, she got money in exchange for finding out this man's secret. And she delivered him up. You think that doesn't happen in the truth? Are right, you got wicked men that, that won't deliver you up. There's men that will deliver you up. There's women that will deliver you up. All right, there's women and men in this truth. They'll take your secrets and they'll use it to their advantage. All right, you got men and women in this truth when you may reveal a certain secret of yours to them and they may think upon that secret you just told them. And, say, mm. and it, it may be your shortcomings. Or right, you may tell them about your shortcomings and how you fall and do this, how you fall and do that, and how you regret doing this and that. And they may listen to that and then take that later on, take it on and on themselves to think about it later on. They say, hmm, I don't do that sin. I don't commit that sin. I didn't make the mistake that this person made. And I'm better than that person. And then they lift up the head. And then every time they see you, now they're talking down at you. And you wonder why. Because they took your secret and said, look, hey, that's. Hey, you you commit that demon, look, that demon doesn't even come my way. 
I'm better than you. I'm the elect. Then now, now you're getting mistreated. Now you're being treated less than a man. Now you're being treated less than a woman. All right, these are things that happen in the truth. Look at Kobe. All right, it's an uh, example, a worldly example. Look at Kobe. All right, Kobe realized that he was better than everybody in the practice facility, the Lakers practice facility. And there's videos popping up all over the place. Look how he treats his uh, uh, his teammates. All right, he he treats his teammates like they're less than men. He treats his treat his teammates less less than how you would treat a child. And why is that? Because look, he found out he kind of got a whiff that he's greater than you. he plays basketball better than you. He thinks he's better than you. All right. This is why you can't, you know, you can't reveal certain things to people. This is the book of Sirach 8 in verse 19. It says, open not thine heart to every man, lest he requite thee with a shrewd turn. And we just seen that with Delilah. All right. Uh, Slack you. You just seen that with, with Delilah. All right. You know, Samson revealed a secret and she returned you know, she she kind of gave him a, a shrewd turn. And just like the Kobe example. All right, for example, I seen, um, I'm going to be specific. I seen a video uh, uh, of Kobe in practice in the Lakers vicinity and, uh, or facility. And um, it was uh, it was Jeremy Lin. For those that watch basketball, you know, you know what's going on. All right, it was Jeremy Lin in there and, uh, and Nick, Nick Young, I think his name was. All right, that may be his name. But nonetheless, and you got to think about it. All right. A, a lot of people, imagine being Kobe's teammate. You're going to look at him like a great, and you're going to treat him differently. You're going to put him on a pedestal. That's what people do. They put men like that on a pedestal. So now, obviously, his teammates, I'm sure they put him on a pedestal and, and treated him like he was a godsend, and he would treat him like he's better. And once he got a whiff of that, and seeing, look, these guys, hey, they, you know, they kind of view me as a god. Then he no longer seen them as teammates. He's seen them as peasants. All right. These guys are just here to, you know, to get slayed by me. If you got ears to hear. All right. They're just here to be trodden on the foot. To just stand in my shadow. That's why he started treating them like that. They revealed certain things they shouldn't have. If you... Even if you reverence Kobe, you don't just go up to him and, I see you as a superstar, Kobe. You're my favorite player. I love you, Kobe. And then once he starts treating you like nothing but a fan and trash, I mean, you can't be confounded. That plays out every day. That's why you have to be careful of what you're releasing and what you're letting slip and what you're allowing somebody else to consume. Watch you do and consume. Because people will use that against you. Let me get another precept. All right, this is the book of Sirach 33 and verse 19. All right, Sirach 33 and 19. It says, give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. And when you reveal certain things to certain people, you kind of give them power because now they have a secret. Of yours now they have something that nobody else may not know or and they use it against you and it could be your friend it could be your wife it could be uh, uh your son as he said hey look you don't give your power to nobody why it says it says and give not thy goods to another lest it repent thee all right you think the lot after after delilah did what she did to samson don't you think that Samson, he regretted that? That's what it means when it says, uh, uh, lest it repent thee. Meaning you're now you're sorry for doing it. You're acknowledging it as a mistake now. And you don't really want it to kind of get to that point. Where you done already did the damage. All right, and now you're in this position where, damn, I should have never said that. Or I should have never relayed this message to this person. All right? And now you're just stuck with entreating, like you're like the Lord's about to say. It says, lest it repent thee and thou entreat for the same again. Even like the Kobe example, as I said. And them, them, 
you know, his teammates, they put him on a pedestal. And then after he started disrespecting them and not showing them any respect, don't you think that every practice they were trying to gain that man's respect back? You think they like being talked to like that? Being talked down to? No, nobody does. After that, they were stuck in treating, trying to trying to get that respect that they could have have had, they could have had, or slacking, which they could have had if they would have just kind of shut their mouth and not really show Kobe, hey, I, I think you're the best player in the world, or just reverencing him. They could have avoided that. Because now Kobe, what that forces him to do, now he got to kind of walk lightly. Now he got to kind of, he's guess, now he's stuck with guessing at his neighbor and figuring out how how to treat this person and how I can treat that person and how I can speak to this person. All right. Now he's now he's also trying to, you know, he, like I say, he's trying to figure you out instead of you just kind of giving everything out. And then now he's like, All right, I'm going to treat you like this. And then you're stuck in treating for that respect again. And again, this thing can happen with your children. All right, there's many times where you see parents trying to trying to gain the respect of their child again. All right, because they may the child may have found out something that the parent did when they were younger or some bad mis decision that they made when they were younger. And then now the kid is like, oh, no, I'm better than you. I wouldn't have made that mistake. I can't trust. I don't like you. And then then the father or the mother that's in that predicament, what are they? What do you see them always doing? Trying to rub the child on the back and say, look, you know, I know I made a mistake, but please just forgive me. I right, forgive me. All right, that's off. There's no way. There's no way in hell. You as the parent, you should be entreating for respect from your child. Your child should already give you respect. But you see, when you do certain things and you reveal certain things, you can even reveal, you can even teach your uh, uh, children the wrong message. All right, you can give your child the wrong message about you. All right, when if you if you have children and you're always being nice to the child, the child asks for a donut, you give them a donut. The child wants to watch TV, you kind of give them the TV. All right, they want whatever they want to do, you just give it to them. They're like, oh, he's a softy. Then the next thing you know, you say, uh, uh, David, that may be his son, your son's name. David, pass me the iron board. No, dad, you get it yourself. Now you're in a predicament where you got to work to get that child's trust back. Hey, that happens in this truth, like I said earlier. Somebody will get certain information or intel on you, and then they'll put themselves on a, a higher level than you, and then they start mistreating you and treating you like you're trash, like you're lower than them, like you're on a lower level than them, and now you're stuck in treating and trying to get that respect back. But that person may not ever respect you again because they already got in their mind, look, they're better than you. Now, obviously, somebody that thinks like that, that's off. But at the same time, hey, look, you should never gave them the ammunition to do so. Again, that's why the Lord said, I'm going to read it one more time. All right. This is the book of Sirach 8 and verse um, 19. It says, open not thine heart to every man, lest he requite thee with a shrewd turn. See, so the message of this video is, as I said, a hey, beware of what you reveal to people and who you're revealing it to. All right. Not everybody is supposed to be trusted with your information. Not you don't tell everybody everything about yourself. You don't you don't give yourself to the world. Here's my heart. Because when you give your heart to the world, what happens to you? They trample over you. All right. And then you getting trampled over so much. And you may lose your faith in this thing. You may say, man, I'm done with this. And you kind of leave the truth and you allow somebody else to cause you to fall out. And this happens in the truth. Trust me, this happens. So Lord willing, this was edifying to at least one brother or even to one sister. With that, I'm going to give all honor and glory to the most high Yahweh, which the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai, which the world calls Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom.